Hey, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Prusa Core 1 build that I've just completed. I wanted to start off the video by just thanking John over there at 3D Printing World for allowing me to build his printer. I am going to talk about my overall experiences with this printer. I'm also going to be giving you a top 10 build tips. I did have a challenging start. I had some minor calibration issues in the front and I even had a belt come loose, but that was really the only significant issue that I ran into while trying to get this printer going. You may be wondering how long might it take to build a printer like the Prusa Core 1. Plan on spending at least a few weekends and evenings to build this. The instructions are very good and you should be able to get through the build. There may be some challenges, especially when you get towards the end and you're uh, putting the, the gantry on in the belts. That's probably the most challenging part of the build that I ran into. And I really did put the printer through the paces. I tested a series of different filaments, including TPU, PLA, and PETG. All of them printed pretty much flawlessly. The only filament that I have not tested yet that I would like to is like a PLA CF. I do have a hard nozzle coming. I don't have it here with me yet. Here I am printing one of 3D Printing World's mini fidget uh, designs. It's a pretty cool little model, so be sure to check that out if you want to test your printer. Here I am giving TPU a shot. This is Saint Smart TPU 95A Shore Hardness. And Prusa did have a profile for this. The TPU is being handled very well by the Core 1. We're getting into some bridging now, but very pleased how it's going down. And the print is completed. Everything looks good. And here is another 3D Printing World print. This is a vise. Oh, look at that. Operates very well. And if uh, there would have been any warp in the gantry, we would have definitely not been able to turn this smoothly like this. The top 10 list here, these are things that I ran into during the build. If you have another tip, feel free to jump in and leave one in the comments. Now I'm not going to read through all these tips, but I do want to highlight a few of them. I'd also encourage you to check out my website, gregsmakercorner.com, if you want to read more detail around this. I think number one is very important. You want to have a very bright workspace and keep all those fasteners and screws and components, pretty much everything in their original boxes. Otherwise, you're gonna to struggle to find things. That was one of the other tough parts of the build. And then the other one that I wanna call out is number seven. I had the most trouble with the belts, including uh, one of the belts slipping. So make sure that you have that overlap of four to five teeth coming through the neck extruder holder. Otherwise, that belt might slip out and make sure you screw it down really good. You could even use Loctite on those screws if you want. Feel free to pause if you want to digest the rest of it, but otherwise, keep on watching. And one tip that I did neglect is talking about gummy bears. I actually tweeted my, my tip out and Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, responded, my gummy bears, um, unfortunately, the box was in my car like on a 100 degree Fahrenheit day. So most of them melted, but my German friends um, sent me some of these Bala Bala gummy bears. So these were a good substitute. Definitely take breaks and eat lots of snacks while you're building the printer. I'm gonna talk about the things that I really like about the Prusa Core 1, and then I'm also gonna balance that with things that I think they should improve. You can also find a detailed write-up on my website, gregsmakercorner.com. I'm not gonna cover everything in detail that I would cover there. So be, be sure to check that out if you wanna get more information. I really do like how sturdy this machine is. There's a lot of sheet metal that's being used, and the sheet metal is very solid. This is a very heavy machine. That's both a pro and a con. I like how you've got like your filament spool over here that's kind of pulling in filament through the tube. I just like how compact it is. The printer does have ventilation. This is kind of a nice feature, so you can print PETG or, or PLA and not have to worry about closure getting too hot. I also like this LED light here. This kind of helps you understand like the status of what's going on. There's also a white LED. You can see the whole chamber is illuminated. So whenever you're printing, you can actually see what's going on and you don't have to add that aftermarket. Now you can see here, I've got a textured sheet. This printer also had a smooth sheet and they're both PEI. There's also a satin variation you can use. And I believe these are all the same size as the Prusa Mark IV. And here you can see the LCD screen. I really like the screen. It's got a lot of nice features that you can just navigate. You'll also see over here that I've got a USB stick in here. So you can still print with an old school USB stick. Um, you can also use the 
Prusa Connect and print that way directly from your computer. On the LCD screen, you can just kind of come in here and click. You can also touch, which is pretty cool. So if you'd rather touch, uh, my fingers are a little fatter, so sometimes they don't always hit where I want, so I tend to use the knob. There's a lot of menu options here for loading, unloading. You can control your printer, the typical uh, controls that you would expect. There's calibration tests here. You get green check marks for everything that passes, and you definitely want to run through this before you start your print. And there's just general info. And settings. So you can configure and turn things on and off through here. Something also that I'll mention, input shaping is configured by default, but if you want, you can change the values here. You can also get an accelerometer and add that to the tool head, but that is optional. So just be aware of that. As you can see up here in the left-hand corner, I've also got the Prusa Buddy Camera. I haven't actually configured that yet, but it seems like it's a pretty cool device and it just kind of hangs there magnetically. I do like the tool head. This is called the Nextruder. It's pretty compact. It's got a nice fan and it's got a hot end modified E3D Nextruder. They do call it a high flow hot end, but I don't really think it's high flow compared to what I'm used to like on the VZBot. It's going to be fine for most needs and most printing. It does have three lead screws. The lead screws are all run off separate motors. They're also all being run off the same stepper. So you won't be able to do tri-point leveling. The door is actually pretty nice. There are pre-drilled holes here for when you're assembling it. This handle is a little different. You do have to tape it down, but it seems to be working fine. I like these handles here in the sides. This gives you a lot of room to work with, and I know there are mods available for things like adding tool holders. So be sure to check out the mod community on, on printables. Now, some of the things that I don't like, one of the biggest things is that if your belts ever come loose, I had to tear off the entire tool head in order to get access to them. That's probably about a half hour um, process, so it's not the end of the world, but it is kind of annoying. When I rebuilt the tool head and put the, be the belts back on, I went ahead and uh, Loctited the screws down and I tightened them really tight. And I made sure that four to five teeth were showing. I would say just the whole calibration routine, finickiness of squaring up the gantry, that's probably something that can be improved upon. I've probably built 10 to 12 other Core XY printers and the Prusa one actually was probably as much or more challenging in terms of just getting everything squared up and the belts where I needed them. I'm not too crazy about having a 24 volt bed, especially on a printer like this. I think an AC bed would be better. It would allow you to heat up much quicker. Probably got a lot of supply of this. It, it works. But it does take a little bit of time for the bed to heat up. There's also a heat soak built into the firmware, and you can skip that, but that heat soak does take a good five minutes or even longer, depending on what temperature you're trying to heat up your bed to. I'm a little surprised they're still using rods and LMU bearings. Now, there's nothing wrong with those, but I think a lot of uh, different printer companies and manufacturers and open source DIY has moved to linear rails. There is one linear rail and that's used here on the gantry, which was a good choice, but I would like to see those on the Y axis as well. We're fine with lead screws and rods on the Z. I don't see any reason to change that. I'd also like to see a nozzle scrubber somewhere in here because the nozzle does tend to get gunk built up on it, especially after you load and unload filament. In today's day and age, you may be wondering, is this the right printer? You may especially be wondering about other models, the Creality's, the Bamboo's. I do think that Prusa is still very relevant. I think this machine proves it. As far as multicolor goes, it does look like Prusa is going to be coming out with another multicolor option in addition to the MMU system that they currently have. I would probably recommend waiting just to see what the Vontech index option is going to be looking like. I've been a long-term Prusa user. My first Prusa printer was the Prusa Mark II, which is a bed slinger. And I then went to the Mark III. I also had a Prusa Mini at one point. I was getting kind of tired of the bed slingers, and that's, of course, why I ended up going with Core XY builds. If you're new to 3D printing, of course, give Prusa Core 1 a good look. It's definitely a more expensive option, but it's a great one if you are comfortable building or if you want to buy the assembled version. If you are a Voron 
builder or VZBot or some other open source printer, does a Prusa Core one make sense? And I would say, actually, yes, it could. If you want a printer that has a lot of support from a company, you want pre-built profiles for your filament, and you want to be in the ecosystem, if you ever find yourself getting tired of DIY, um, this is a great option. It's kind of in between. You're not buying an appliance like a bamboo that's really hard to tweak and upgrade, and you have to buy a new one every few years to get something new. Prusa, they've got a track record of being able to upgrade machines and um, when other things are released. And a lot of people are coming from the Mark IV, and the Mark IV can be upgraded into this Core XY. It's about three, $400 cheaper than buying a pure kit like I have here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I spent a lot of time building this, and I also happen to record every step along the way of my build. So I am planning on releasing a build video series it's probably going to take me a little bit of time to get that up, but I wanted to release this review and tip video before I did that. Stay tuned for more, and thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.